Ozone 8 comes with another new plugin called the Tonal Balance Control, and it's not a module, it's a plugin. So what we're going to do is find the very, very last slot in our signal flow, and you can see that I have Isotope Insight installed after the maximizer. But if you're not using Insight, just make sure that the Tonal Balance Control plugin is at the very end because it is a meter with which you can monitor the overall frequency response of your project. So I'm going to click on the Add Module button, I'm going to click on Plugins, and then I'm going to go down to the Unknown folder under the Manufacturer heading, and then the plugin that I'm looking for is Tonal Balance Control. And then double clicking on that will load Tonal Balance Control. Now let's talk about the display screen for just a moment. These aren't actually controls. Again, this is a meter, but it has split this display into four distinct frequency bands. Lows, low mids, high mids, and highs. And then this light green region here is the energy and the EQ representation of your audio file. And there are several targets that you can use that are presets. So there's a bass heavy preset, a modern preset, and an orchestral. But in just a moment, I'll show you how to make your own target curves. But let's take a look at what we can do inside the Tonal Balance Control. And to do that, I'm going to click and drag this over here, and I'm going to move the Ozone interface over here so that we can see both of these at the same time. So now what I'll do is start playback on my project, and you'll see that all of these frequency ranges have lit up with these little meters that show whether we're in range or out of range. In other words, which of these frequency ranges is too loud for the target curve or too quiet for that same curve. This is the target curve of bass heavy. And what I'm going to do is choose the modern curve instead. And now you can see that the energies of this particular project that I'm working on are right in line with these basic ranges. Now the low end has another special setting, which is the crest factor. And what this meter shows us is whether the low end response of our project is either too dynamic or too compressed. If that meter bounces into the left hand side, that is indicating that the low frequency content may be too dynamic. On the other hand, if it comes over into this side of the display in that crest factor window, it might be too compressed. So this little bouncing ball will tell you what the low end is doing. And let's talk about making our own curve. If I come over to the target, there's a drop down window right here, and I can choose create custom target curve from audio file. And what I'm going to do is load up one of my favorite Frank Zappa tunes off of Joe's Garage, which is Lucille has messed my mind up, and open that. It's going to scan that audio file, and it's going to make a curve out of that file. Then I can save that as a custom balance curve. I'm just going to call this Lucille, then click on Save. And now I can match the tonal balance of my project with the tonal balance of this commercial audio file. So let's press play and see how close we are right now. And it may take a moment for it to find the ranges. You can see that the low mid is lit up right here. And that control or that meter is showing that we're in bounds. But the high mids are a little low, and the highs are right in range, and the lows are a little over. So what can we do about that? Let's go into the equalizer and make some adjustments so that we can get in bounds inside the tonal balance control. So since the low end is a little too loud, let's take this low frequency band and pull it down a bit. then we'll see the energy in this low response get more in line with that curve. So now we're getting close. The high mids are a little dark, just a tiny bit. So I'm going to take this EQ node and push that up between the two and about eight kilohertz range. So right about here, when I turn that up, I can monitor the response over here on the high mid control you can see now it's getting closer to in line with the target curve that I have selected. 
So this is a broad view of those four frequency bands, but there's also a fine control of the frequency band too. So you'll see this thread going through those four frequency bands. And right now I'm pretty close, but you can see that the low frequencies are lighting up up from time to time because my crest factor is indicating that the low end might be too dynamic. So let's come over to the dynamics control and I'm going to put a limiter on the low end so that it compresses and limits that low frequency band in the multiband compressor. And I'm going to increase the compressor threshold here so it takes a bigger bite out of the audio file. And let's bring the limiter down even a little bit more. And now you see that the low end indicator isn't flashing on and off because we're right in line. We're close to being a little overly dynamic, but not enough to light up that indicator. And another thing you can do in the tonal balance control is audition the audio that is playing back from inside the tonal balance control window. So if you hold down Alt or Option on your computer keyboard and then click and drag this magnifying glass around, you can hear all those different frequency ranges to give you an idea of what instrumentation is contained within each of those bands. And that can be done in the fine control or in the broad control as well. So that's how to use tonal balance control in ozone. And next, let's talk about using it in your DAW.